back from a hiatus. We're back. Happy Easter, y'all. Happy Easter, all. What's up? How you guys doing? I'm doing. Doing well. This is Keeping Up with the Cardassians. And I am Nick. I am Rob. And I am Joe. Are you Joe? Always. Always Joe. Sometimes William. Sometimes William, yeah. In a more formal setting, but always Joe. Never Joey? <sighs> to family, I'm Joey. Really? Yeah. Joey. Yeah. Oh, you, I have heard your mom's yeah, call It's like Joey. mom, dad, brother, um, like close family. But other than that, never Joey. I, I just, it just sounds too kiddish. I understand completely. The only, the only Joey that really pulls it off, even Joey Lawrence always seemed like a grown, like a big kid. Joey Harrington? Still seemed like a kid. Yeah. Joey from Friends is the only one. Yeah. Even though he was agreed. kind of a big well, kid, he but he was, still, he was still kind of an adult. Yeah, he was a kid. Definitely. But, he, but he pulled off the Joey. How you doing? I'm good. I, I, I never understood that. Watching Friends, going back and rewatching it, I never understood how he was this sex icon, right? Like he Confidence. Was, he was a scumbag. It's confidence. Yeah, like, Aren't they all, though? I mean, How you doing? Aren't a lot, aren't, aren't a lot of... "Quote unquote" sex icons like scum, scummy people. Yeah, that's true because they don't care. Like you said, they're just confident. they're sociopaths. They yeah. just they shoot their shot no matter what, even if the person yeah they do. Want it. Confidence yeah, they do. goes a long way. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah it does. they shoot their shot. Yeah, they do. I'm just gonna keep saying yeah, they do. Yeah, it does. So, anyways, we got two episodes today. We got uh, civil defense and Meridian. So two. Uh, Two episodes. I yeah, you don't know. sound too thrilled about that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not super thrilled today. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But there I, had to be a low point at some point. There had to be. Yeah, it did. And yeah, the, the, leading up to this, these episodes had been really good. Yeah, right. They really had. And you, you, I mean, you got to hit a wall at some point, and yeah. I think we hit that wall with these two. Yeah, I think so. It's just, one more than the other. I think. Yes, absolutely. I think one more than the other. But uh, as as a set, I think this yeah. is the weakest pair we've had in in quite some time. I would agree. I would agree. So it's going to be interesting to review those, but uh, I don't know. What's going on in the world? What's going on? Anything going know, there's, on? There's there's a lot going on kind of in like movie and pop culture news. Yeah. What's going on? Some Star Trek news this week, too. Yeah. yeah a new Star Trek movie is in production, but J.J. J. Abrams is producing. So. Uh, it probably means it's a uh, Kelvin universe. So it, uh, it's probably the sequel, right? That they were going to do with the time traveling arc. Either that or the Quentin Tarantino version. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Yeah, either do I. No. Did you know about that? No, I haven't seen any of the new movies. No. um, <laughs> You haven't seen any of them prior to this show, so... <laughs> What is Tarantino had wanted to write and direct a Star Trek movie. Uh, hard pass. So he wrote one, and Jesus nothing ever came of it. Of course, classic Tarantino. He just he wants he wants to do everything. I appreciate the ambition. Yeah, but like focus, do something, <laughs> and do something really well because he's really. I think we've talked about it before. I think we all feel like he's lost a step. He's kind of gotten into his own head. Yeah, he's and, too big for his own britches. Yeah, and he's trying to do everything. And mm-hmm. he's trying to do too much with every project. I would agree with that. Yeah. And it's almost like he's, at first, he was doing these homages. Homages? Homages? Uh, to old school. Homage. Homage. I think so. Yeah. I don't know how you pronounce it. But to these old school films, right? Like, that was part of the, the like, the Western yeah. was uh, Reservoir Dogs, right? Right. Um, the old standoff and you know he's he, but then it got to the point where it's like he was just pa- pandering is the wrong word no it's not it's, it's not, not it's okay. not because i i have i have i'm right on track with you because there's some quentin tarantino movies i love i love kill bill you know i love mm-hmm. reservoir dogs i mm-hmm. love pulp fiction these um, are all early movies though yeah and glorious Bastards was the first one where i'm like eh. and then that what was it the the, the hateful the hateful eight. eight the hateful eight didn't like it. And then uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I didn't care for it. Yeah. Still have to watch that one. And then he also I saw did- something where uh, Margot Robbie said that there was a 20-hour cut of uh, <laughs> Once Upon a Time I in Hollywood. I don't that. doubt it. That guy loves the film. I could Jesus. totally buy it. Can you imagine that, though? Um, didn't he do Jackie Brown? I- yes. Yes. I'm trying to look. Quentin Jerome Tarantino. So my thing with Tarantino is in the beginning, Knoxville in the beginning, Mm -hmm. it was, he loved all of these like 
cult movies, right? Yeah. And it influenced him. Yeah. So you in his early movies, he had these original ideas, right? And he yeah. was and he was yeah. doing them and but you could see his influence. Mm-hmm. And once he started doing press for this, he would tell you his influence. So the media picked up on it. And once that snowball kind of got rolling, mm-hmm. he instead of like being influenced, he started really leaning into it and and pan I think pandering is the right word, too hard into his influences where now they're not really original movies. He's just right. taking what he likes from these movies and trying to do something a little bit his own style, but it's not too original. Whereas yeah. these early films are super original yeah, and they're great. They're classics, but you can see where his influences yeah. started. Yeah. And I think he's lost that part of it now, now where he's just, I don't know. It's just not, it does. The, the, the movies don't feel the same before in his early career, you could feel when it was a uh, Tarantino film. Yeah. Without saying Quentin Tarantino. Right. Absolutely. I think he's lost. I think he's lost uh, a step in that, in that regard. What's so interesting. I'm looking at his, his, his uh, filmography. You got Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill one and two, then Death Proof, which to me was a huge stinker. Inglorious Bastards, the Django Unchained, the Hateful Eight, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So what's so fascinating is I'm, I was just sitting there saying, like, all of his later works were just crap, right? And you have a good point. Like, a lot of his stuff was kind of, he was just basically mirroring exactly what influenced him. Instead of taking that influence and letting it. Right. And in you, instead of being influenced, Pretty he's he's taking things from it. Yeah. It's just interesting because looking at some of these movies, like the Django, I thought was good. You know what it is? I'm not going to rewatch these movies uh, now. I would rewatch Pulp Fiction. I would rewatch. Reservoir that's a very rewatchable you know, movie. I oh, yeah. would rewatch Reservoir Dogs because that's a cool, you know, story. I think Jackie Brown is is vastly underrated in his catalog. I think so too. Um, but I'm not going to rewatch the Django or Inglorious Bastards or you know they're not. Well, it's three not, hours. There's not those. They're they're not those sorts of films. Now I will argue that there are parts of Inglorious Bastards which are incredible. Like um, the the scene in the bar where they're you know where they're, he shows them how he's counting or whatever, and he counts. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but he counts in the American style on his fingers as opposed to the German style. So yeah. they knew he was a plant. And there's just this tension that builds up in this bar scene. Um, like where he's like thinking he's getting away with it. And then all of a sudden he realizes he's not. And then there's a big shootout and everyone's dead. Yeah. Right. Like it's just a fantastic scene. Yeah. I mean, he's still a good filmmaker. I don't, I, yeah. I just think that he's, I think he's a bit full of himself at this point. Well, and even in interviews, if you, you know, like people always ask him in interviews about violence, which of course gets annoying, but he can be just such a prick about it to people. And I just don't get that. Um, yeah, he's an artist. A lot of artists are like that. Yeah, yeah. But if you if you notice in his films, um, especially in the early films, a lot of the violence is off screen, so it's off camera, so it's not direct. It's not directly go. So it's violent, but it's not gory. It's impl- yeah, the the violence is is heavily implied, and it's shown. I mean, you, you see like gunfire and you see blood splatter, but you don't see someone getting so. So the gore Heck is off in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but it was he he did that on purpose. Yeah, right, exactly. And then now it's become more of a let me show it like in Inglorious Bastards at the end where they're just mowing down everyone. Yeah. And the opera at the end of the movie, you know. Yeah. And they kill Hitler. I just Hitler had it coming. He had it coming. Spoiler he alert. He had it Jeez. coming. Shh, shh. So in the in that release about the Star Trek, it said Paramount also delayed Mission Impossible Seven and Top Gun Maverick. I saw Top that. Gun Maverick got delayed till November, and then Mission Impossible was till twenty three. Is that every that? I right? think it's twenty twenty two. Thank then God, they already, they already filmed it. It's though. done, it's done. It's filming. So I don't know why can. they delayed it. They, they but delayed that was it. the same thing. Are they work, they're working Wonder on eight Woman. now? Yep, they're going to transition to eight here yeah. pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. But they like Wonder Woman sat in the can for two years. Eighty four. Like they, the, the movie's done. Corona, hopefully, with everybody getting vaccinated, will be done sometime soon. Right, but they, they want to recoup some of that money. So let's and time, wait. Really, timing, timing I don't that release perfectly. I don't want to wait after Fallout. I don't want to wait. Yeah. The movie was so good. I haven't seen it. I do I do want to see Top Gun Maverick in the theater, though. Heck yeah. 
I'm so really I, excited I, about that. I'm yeah. going to see I want to see it in IMAX. That's an IMAX. Yeah. If they have that to Henry Ford. We're going, yeah. I think I'm excited to Show see it trip. just to see if they can make a good film out of it. You mean, you mean see if it can work 20-some yeah. years later, yeah, 25 like, can, years can later, can whatever it is? It up? I know there was originally a script back in the day, and I don't know if this is the one Shit, that 35 filmed. years later. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a long time ago. But originally there was a script where it was basically like the fighter pilots versus drone pilots, right? And proving who was superior, right? Mm-hmm. Um and that was going to be the original script years ago. I don't know what they ended up going with with this one. We haven't seen it yet. but So that was like an interesting concept to me. Like, is it the death of the f- fighter pilot? Because now you can just sit in a van and... Yeah, I mean, I think I think the idea can... I think you can flesh out a, a good idea. Right. And you have you have I established so. characters. And yeah. I, w- I want to say a franchise, but I guess it's only one movie. So how, how the <laughs> hell can you have a... I mean, but it is a franchise, I guess. Yeah, it would be. Didn't you say before we started recording that you love Henry Cavill? Yes. Why the hell haven't you? Why the hell haven't you seen Mission Impossible Fallout? Then because I he's haven't seen the one phenomenal. before that. Uh, fair, but he's phenomenal in it. He's great. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't think Mission Impossible is. It's it's not like they're not super connected. I mean, they are, but I th- I feel like you could jump in and see one without you having could. seen every single one prior to that. You absolutely could, but. There is a little bit that ties into the prior one, just a little bit. Yeah. But if, if you're only interested in seeing the one, you could do a little reading for 10 minutes before you see the movie. Yeah, get that's caught a good up, point. I just then... watch it downstairs after this. The last one I saw was Ghost Protocol because I didn't see Rogue Nation. So Ghost that's... Protocol was good. Yeah. I liked Ghost it. Protocol was the uh, the one on the, the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So anyways. Uh, Picard that. Season 2 trailer. Discovery Season 4 trailer? Yeah. They it, tease Q. They tease Q, which, no, thank you. No, no. Discovery no. Season so 4, am I, new uniforms no, no. again. No. Am I allowed to bring up the Deep Space Nine uh, reference in that trailer? Yeah, yes, we were you talking are. about that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not there. Well, we're not there No, yet. we're not there yet. We haven't no. seen that. But, but. so, Cisco? No. Not don't, even in like I, a flashback I, or a flash forward or something? Don't even read into it. I have no faith. I do. You do? I do. I mean, they. I could be. A, I could see it being an introspective series with Picard, Cisco, and Q somehow. Maybe like, it plays into some research that Picard has to do, but other than that, I, I wouldn't put a lot of faith it, in it. I mean, all all this no chatter in the last couple years of Picard, or not Picard, of um, Cisco's role being revived. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. You don't. You don't see it even just for maybe an episode or two, like or a, a few scenes here and there. Not. Not maybe. Maybe not a big storyline, but you don't. You don't see. No, I, they'd have to recast. I don't think Avery Brooks would come back. No. No, I don't. He's I do. he's retired from acting for a long time. I do think he'd come back hmm. if it's a good enough story. He's coming back. Well, judging from Star Trek, now it's not going to be a very good story. So I did, uh, <laughs> you gotta stop, man. You're such a hater. I like but Picard it, a lot more than you did. I did not like Picard at all. But Avery Brooks has kind of soured on... Uh, he, I don't think he's soured. He doesn't do interviews or anything like that anymore because yeah. he's said, quote, I've said all I've had to say, and there's nothing new to say. Mm-hmm. That's why he doesn't go to conventions. So why That's why he doesn't so do it. What if, I mean, I'm sure they, I'm sure, you know, teams approach him all the time with, quote, unquote, new things to say as... Right. Or as podcast. Cisco. Yeah. Or podcast. Avery but, Brooks, if you're listening. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> He is. But, Why would you be so negative? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't do interviews. He's not going to interview with that. Well, he's maybe he only does underground interviews. There we go. Ever as underground as they get. Yeah, we are underground. So you know. So maybe if they if they come to him with a nice storyline, something that he thinks could add to that that character arc, you, you don't think he'd say, you know what? Maybe maybe one last time around the block. One last. But if it's time. only for an episode or two, do you really think that he wanted to invest in coming back for an episode or two? If the if the storyline is that good, yeah, why uh, not? I don't know. I I put zero faith in it. Yeah, as a as a as a new Trek fan, <clears throat> I'm gonna put faith in it. A new Trek fan, you're just a DS9 fan because you don't know the other Trek shit. He's seen Star Trek. Hey, I've too. seen a, I've seen a film. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and I've seen less than a handful of episodes of the original series. And he's and not also in sequ- seen not in the theme order. credits to Star Trek Enterprise. That's right. Yeah, that hurts. It's been that's a long road getting from there to here. It's been a long road. Anyway. It, sh- it shocked my system seeing that for the first time. It's not that bad, though. 
No, but when I'm used to like these orchestral, yeah, 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 very, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then well, that it really caused a huge outrage because of that, right? Because it was, um, because it was not uh, orchestral. I don't know if yeah. that outrage is the right word, but it uh, drew some concern. People were pissed, uh, and the opening scene with all the, with all like all the shots of Earth and the, and yeah. it, I like that part. I think I mean it's. It, I think it might have its place. <laughs> who, who the hell am I to say? But. Yeah. I haven't seen who are you? <laughs> nobody. Mitch Hedberg, that's who. You know, the last two weeks since we've recorded, there really hasn't been a ton of pop culture news to go after. One thing I will say though, speaks dear to my heart. Stabler returned to Law and Order SVU. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. Stabler was with his, man. with his new show, right? Yeah. Uh, so he did a crossover. Organized crime. Yeah, yeah, with the other one first and yeah. Then he went back to the other one. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That's that's pretty. That's a smart play by um, by NBC and the the people writing Law and Order to have a a nice kickstart to that new that new um, Law and Order franchise. Yep. Yeah. The, yeah. the new series. I was a big fan of SVU when he was on it. I I, I loved I loved old school Law and Order oh, yeah. and Law and Order SVU. They when when they were like real gritty. They felt they felt real gritty. Yeah. And they felt like real stories. Now it, it seems a bit oh, manufactured. Yeah, it, yeah, it does feel like it's run its course. And twenty two years though, that's a hard to. Yeah, that's a I hard mean, good standard for them, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's impressive. It's job security for the cast yeah. and crew. You know what's happened actually in the last two weeks? Godzilla versus Kong came out. Did yeah, you watch but, it? Oh yeah, I watched it. Eli, did you watch it? No, I did not. I haven't watched it. yet. Eli and I like. I did watch a review, disaster though. movies. Right there are. A, <laughs> There's some ridiculous things that happen in that movie, but it's giant monsters fighting. So who cares? Yeah. I think I would enjoy it. It's just fun. But it is fun. Like yeah. I don't care. I suspend belief. But the, like, there's some things in there that are kind of hard to believe. Like it's not really a spoiler for the movie, so I'm just going to say it. But there's a part where don't be worried about spoiling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Godzilla yeah. vs Kong. Yeah, there's a part in the movie where they they decide they need Kong, right? So they go to his island, Skull Island, where he's being observe like they've got him in this giant dome observing him and the guy's like i need kong and and the lady's like okay and then they just take kong it's like how does she have the authority to carry around this giant ape like for this organization it doesn't work that way like i need i need the bureaucracy behind this right right? like well let me send an email to hr and see who can authorize this yeah (laughs) it just was you know it sounds silly right but it's more like it, you know, one scene he's like, "I need Kong," and then the very next scene is Kong on the on the cargo ship. So it's, you're arguing arguing that in a movie with two giant monsters fighting each other. I would That's have, the hill you're going to die on. The hill I'm going to die on is the fact that maybe they didn't even have control of Kong in the first place. None of them did. Kong's his own man. And they found a way to get him to follow them instead of being like, you know, he's in an observation chamber. And their their whole thing about it is they have him in this giant chamber because. If he's out of the chamber, Godzilla will know he's there, and then Godzilla will want to kill Kong because Godzilla has to be the mass, you know, the mm. the dominant thing. Which is like, how do they know that? <laughs> how do? How... So is it, it's Godzilla versus Kong versus Mecha Godzilla. Yes. Oh, yes. Because that's the, that's the name of isn't it? Isn't the that's the, I think the film is Godzilla versus Kong versus. Nope. Godzilla versus Kong. Um, let me look it up. Well, the... Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Kong. That's all it's called. Yeah. Yep. They missed an opportunity. Yeah. Yep. For that extra versus. Yeah, but, well, because the whole Mecha Godzilla thing is kind of a surprise reveal, right, at the end. Surprise to me. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, now you know. They they, they got to fight Mecha Godzilla. All right. And they destroy a lot of crap, and it's pretty cool. I'm in. It's pretty cool. Godzilla, you know, the fight between Godzilla and Kong, pretty sweet. Though there's like an honest trailer on it that's pretty fantastic because in these movies they have this obsession with breathing down the throat of the other monsters. If you ever watch them, like Godzilla's constantly trying to open the mouth of the other one and like uh, spit into its mouth. Oh, and it's just a really weird, dark thing that you. That's don't think odd. About. That's... I never picked yeah. up on that. Yeah, watch the honest trailers for it. It's pretty fantastic. Huh. Honest trailers. That's weird. Just... That's some weird stuff. Yeah, that is pretty weird. Yeah. So that even monsters out. have kinks, I guess. Whatever, you teach their own, man. Yeah. Like, and, you know, hey, I'm not we, hating, I'm not hating on them. Just... Yeah, don't shame. Who don't are we sh- to judge? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've been alone for a very long time. That's true. 
Yeah. I mean, poor God. And I mean, think about it. If, if we were fighting and I just started breathing into your mouth, you know how weirded out you'd be? I would, I would have an immediate advantage. Yeah, I would just stop laughing. Wait, what, what? So when Gosling and Momoa are wrestling and uh, Gosling tries to do that to Momoa, but that's his tactic versus Momoa? Yeah. To have a chance? Yeah. Well, I think, actually, Momoa. I think he's just probably going in for a kiss, right? Yeah. I would. I don't check a I mean, Momoa either of them. Momoa is a beautiful yeah. man. So is Gosling. You were Gosling, Team Gosling. Yeah, you were, they you were are team... both beautiful men. It's, it's, I don't judge. They're both beautiful. I mean, I do judge because Gosling over Momoa. You're oh. out of your mind. <sighs> Cavill over over Momoa. See, that's a tough. That's a tougher argument there. Henry Cavill. He's a nerd. Uh, I I gotta go with the it's nerd. True. Like he's obsessed with building computers. He's obsessed with Warhammer yeah. 40k, w- World of Warcraft. He almost missed his. Superman. Yeah, what's Jason Momoa's nerd resume? Jason Momoa isn't much of a nerd. He's, he's more of a hippie. He's like a and he's a oh. rockhead. He's a he's a metalhead too. Is he a metalhead? He's a big fan of Tool. He's a hippie metalhead. Well, head. Jesus Christ. Uh, Momoa. Yeah. Yeah. Momoa. Momoa. Just based off that, Momoa. Momoa. Momona. Moana. What can I say except you're welcome? Do you all like Nick's singing? Comment. <laughs> I know. I Instagram, sing, Facebook. I sing every single <laughs> episode at some point. It's going to happen. Yeah. So, we should, you know what we should do? Because <clears throat> you've been putting out this uh, Star Trek bingo, right? Which yes. is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, we need to do one for the show. Show bingo. Nice. That's a good so, idea. <laughs> Rob talks about his former career. Well, the, I, mean, I haven't done that in a while. Know, my wife, the yeah. free space in the middle, obviously, show meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then we can do... Scrubs reference. Yeah, Scrubs yeah. reference. Uh, Nick changes his mind on an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is converted on an episode. Nick tries to join a <laughs> He's cult. a flip-flopper. Yeah. Nick, Nick I think we can put together a a fun uh, keeping up with the Cardassians that, bingo card. That's yeah. a great idea. We, yeah. we should absolutely do that. Yeah. Uh, why not? Yeah. Why not? We got, we along, got shit folks. that happens regularly. A lot of stuff that happens regularly on this show. That We're going to do it. Yep. We're going to do it. I like it. It'll be fun. We're going to do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, de- definitely. De- definitely. Definitely do it. I'll be going into the show. Yeah, but we should take a quick... Uh, Commercial break real quick, right? Oh, yeah. Let's take a break. We want to take a quick break here. We want to give you a promo of some podcasts you should listen to. Mm -hmm. Friends of ours. We're going to take a quick break here. Check it out. And we'll be back. And we're going to talk about some Star Trek. All right. Let's go. All right. Hello, one and all, to the Insanely Dangerous Retro Pod Show. (laughs) Hello, who's this? Just just don't hurt the kids, okay? (laughs) Goes, Bleh. Who would win in a steel cage match between Andy Crane, Andy Peters versus Neil Buchanan and Tommy oh. Boyd? Buck, 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 buck. Sounds like a scratchy robot chicken. Twelve-inch BA Barackers dolls. That you do didn't really, didn't you really do go like a twelve-incher. <sighs> Here we go. Uh, it worked how I think it's going to work. It's going to be bang average. No, oh, I'm just I'm just over it now. And we're back. So check out those podcasts. I love those guys. They're great. They're great. They're definitely worth a listen. And uh, I have a lot of fun. And thank you for sending uh, your promos in and and give them a listen. They're going to be a good listen for you. Um, so anyways, where, where do we start? Civil Defense? Civil Defense is the first episode. Right, can, I, can, I just be, can I just be up front here? Yeah. I'm not excited about today's episode. Neither am I. No. Civil Defense is better than Meridian. Civil Defense is better. And I enjoyed Civil Defense to a certain extent. I enjoyed it to a certain extent. And even Meridian, there were character moments that were really cool, but the episode as a whole, yeah. Yeah. Crap. All right, so Civil Defense. Who's going to sum it up? Joe is. Nope. I got it. I got it. You you got to do Meridian, though. Oh, I like it. You're doing Meridian. Oh okay, here we go. Civil Defense. Jake and O'Brien are trying to convert a room of the station, a former mining room, to something else. Um, Cisco comes to check in on and says, what you doing, boys? And then all of a sudden, they accidentally messed up the station. So Jake and O'Brien are stuck with Cisco Daddy. Um, Stop with that, man. Not with the daddy. 
So so they so they activate a station self defense thing basically from the time when it was Tarek Nor when it was a Cardassian station. So the the station basically thinks it's a Bajoran uprising. So uh, they get locked down. It causes a lockdown in the station, and everything anyone tries to do in the station basically makes the lockdown more and more and more severe. Um, Garrick uh, finds out about this, comes to help, and then as soon as he comes to help. Ooh, Gal Dukat shows up. Gal Dukat hears the message of uh, the SOS, basically, from himself, from Tarek Noor, and comes in there and tries to negotiate a deal where the Cardassians are back on the station. Well, it doesn't work out, so he tries to leave. Oh, crap, he can't leave now because uh, the station assumes he's a traitor because he's trying to abandon his post. So they're all stuck. They all have to work together in order to get the station to stop from blowing up. By the end of the episode... They do. Happily ever after. I think that's a pretty good summary, man. That, that might be your best one. Except for the Cisco daddy? Let's stop with that. Daddy that, that, was a, that was a good summary. Thank you. Except Thank for you. those yeah. two instances. Daddy Cisco? Is Cisco? Was it because it was Cisco daddy, or would it be better if I said daddy Cisco? No. No. Both not bad. Not in the least. I want you to think about that. I will not. I want... I feel like you're 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 going off the cuff on your reaction, and you maybe need to take a step back and really reflect. No, I I, I take my emotions into it. I just emotional reaction, and that's that's mm-hmm. what I go with. Well, I Let guess, it fly. I guess you can be wrong. I fly by the seat of my pants. I guess you're wrong. Shoot from the hip. That's okay. You can be wrong. All of these cliches. So mm-hmm. they made they turned Ducat back into more of a villain than the last time we saw him. Because yes, last yeah. time we saw him, he was trying to help with the Maquis. Well, but it was going to benefit him. But he seemed more heroic, for lack of a better word, in that episode than he had been the entire series, and now we're yeah. back to him being a pompous t- jerk. And what's interesting is, in both of those episodes, there's a moment where he realizes uh, Cardassian leadership uh, has like betrayed him. Right. And they've either gone over his head, like in the previous episode, or they have put in these fail-safes for when he inevitably tries to yeah right over there I'm you okay listen, i'm listening okay Gosh, there was a cord down i was trying right. to pick up the down cord but yeah so they so they um they have this fail safe they have these things in place to kind of override ducat and he you know he gets kind of power drunk and and he kind of likes to feel a little full of himself and oh, sure he up does. to a point and then yeah. he realizes there's people what there's people above me who don't give a, a damn about me yeah right. Right, he overestimates how important he is. Yeah, his ego is bigger than his actual Which we presence. Kinda, we all have done that, right? I mean, that's a no. My ego is accurate. Just kidding. But there are times, right, where we get a little too big for our britches. Oh, sure. Like, what would they yeah. do without me? Like, every, yeah, thank God for Joe. They would move right. Thank God <laughs> oh, for God. Joe. Everyone's replaceable, right? I mean, everyone's replaceable. Absolutely, especially Joe. Yeah, especially. I'm irreplaceable. We did a podcast without you. We could do it again. Exactly. Exactly. Damn, that cuts to the core, man. It does. It does. Remember, we got Jason. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We got a backup, but it's fine. uh, So it's a bottle episode, essentially. Well, yeah, they Uh, needed to obviously save some money. Yeah, it was a bottle episode. Um, So my my first big giant problem with this episode, right, was uh, there's a lot of create a lot of plot holes so for instance they initially try to beam them out of that room and they can't beam them out right first thought go board the defiant and beam them to the defiant well if they're locked in there because of some shielding the defiant they weren't do locked it. they weren't locked down yet oh true. when just that room was locked down like initially the room was locked down right the room that cisco o'brien and jake were in um right and and uh so that they were in the command center and they said, ops, ops, sorry. They tried to beam them out. And they're like, sorry, we can't do that, right? Because there's a lockdown here. Well, um, just that. Well, maybe that room was shielded and they could not get to the Defiant. And the Defiance transporters wouldn't have worked either. Maybe. And they deduced that already. But maybe they should have said that. Why? Say something you can assume. No, because I don't think you can assume that. I assumed it. Well, you're an idiot. That makes two I'm of starting us. a fight. <laughs> I'm starting a fight. Um, okay. All right. Fine. I'm moving past this. I'm moving past this. I'm gonna. Get... I mean, there were there were plot holes. Oh, it's... sure. I I I'm not a big fan of any film or TV show where 
the contingency has a contingency has a contingency that can do no, like with the Joker in the Dark Knight. He had he knew that the Batman was going to get him on the road there. He did through all, all this, and then he had a plan for that, and a perfect 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 plan for that. Yeah, everything had to go perfect. That's that's dumb. Perfect. Yeah, it's it's and it's the same thing with the with the uh, program in this. It had this contingency for this and this and this. Yeah, and it just it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, but we are watching a sci-fi show. Yeah, made yeah. in the nineties. A bit of a a belief suspension. Yeah, that yes. you have to take into account. I do like I do like the idea of the station fighting back though. Like that's a cool. Yes. Like I I don't I feel like um, very similar to what the problem with Star Trek Voyager was is they get stranded in this area, and that's a big focus of the first couple episodes, and then they no longer care about it. Deep Space Nine does that a little bit with the station, right? They have this Cardassian station. They're struggling to make it work. And then all of a sudden they just forget about it. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think it should be an ongoing thing. They're constantly struggling with it. It's the same idea as buying an old house, right? And something breaks in the house and you go to the store to get a part. You can't find a part that fits because the house is so freaking old. Right. So you got to jury rig things. And when you try to jury rig things, they break. And then before you know it, you know, a leaky valve becomes, oh, my gosh, I got to replace my whole bathroom. Right. I mean, like, uh, so I kind of wish we'd see more of this just sprinkled in there. It doesn't have to be a, a plot point even. Yeah. It just has to be like a system is breaking and malfunctioning in the background. And you have O'Brien beating on it with a, well, to your point earlier in, the tool. in our, our show um, with O'Brien or with the station having issues. And I, I kind of imply, well, maybe they just haven't shown those areas where they're still having issues or it's dirty. Right. That's what they do in this episode. Yeah. Yes, they they show a lot of the, the corners and a lot of the, the yeah, like parts the, of the station where like you this, don't normally see. Yeah, this mm-hmm. processing area, which hasn't been used for a while, doesn't work. They're trying to figure out a use for it. It, yeah. it goes to the point that it's an old station. Yeah. In the three years they've been there, they haven't explored the entire station, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it I goes, like that, yeah, it, seeing that. It, yeah, it is a cool plot. It yes. goes back like to the it. point where it says, all right, so it's not perfection yet, which is a good thing. Right. What I, what I liked was, because um, I, get, I get caught up in, like, it's a, it's Star Trek, so that's, their station, right? I feel like it's a, you know, like a good guy station, right? It's Starfleet. Just, it, but, it, but it's Bajoran and it's Starfleet, but it, it's not. It was built by the Cardassians. Yeah. So yeah. this was a nice reminder that, you know, they don't, they're just kind of operating it. It's yeah. still a Cardassian structure, right? Right. Built and engineered by Cardassians for Cardassians. For a very specific purpose. Yeah. And they are trying to kind of get away from that and make it their own. But it was a reminder that they have they still have a long ways to go. Yeah. Not only visually, but internally, uh, defense mechanisms-wise, um, programs. There's a lot of stuff that they haven't obviously found yet that, yeah. you know, is, is not... It's not good, and it's still, but it still works. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it still, it's still operational, even though the Cardassian presence is gone. The system doesn't know that, right? Right, right. exactly. They forgot that one program. They forgot about it. I, I don't know if either of you noticed this. It's very, very early in the episode. It's in the in the beginning, that first part. It's at uh, like the two minute eleven second mark to mm-hmm. two fifteen mm-hmm. in Ducat's speech. He says a, he says like a line. And then there's a weird edit, and it sounds it the the audio sounds different, and then it goes back. Hmm. I didn't. So I think that. They, I think they had to edit that part of the speech. I don't know why. For time, maybe. And why I don't. They, I don't know. It, yeah. It doesn't really. When you're looking at the screen, what he's saying doesn't really line up perfectly with how his mouth is moving, uh, and the audio sounds a bit. It sounds edited. Yeah. It just took me by surprise. I'm like, okay, well. So maybe we're I don't know. Have if, to look at that after. Yeah, this. I didn't. I don't uh, know if the audio. I didn't clip catch that. Was, yeah, we're gonna have to look at this. It took me, I in the past two weeks since we haven't we've recorded. It took me seven attempts to try to get through this episode, not because it was necessarily a bad episode, it's just because time, circumstance, whatever. Right. So maybe I maybe that's why I didn't catch it, or maybe it's just because I didn't catch it. it. I don't know. I set my alarm for eight a.m. this morning. I watched them both this morning. Oh, did you? Dang! So, so I, was, I wanted to be fresh. All right. Yeah, okay. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to watch them. I didn't watch them on vacation. 
Because I, I would idea. I wouldn't have I just wouldn't have had the focus. And then yeah. I was super busy this week, yeah. and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna set my alarm early. I'll watch them, take my notes first thing in the morning. I'll be super fresh. And uh, I, maybe I was a little bit over analytical with the <laughs> audio, but it, when I had my earbuds in. And I'm like, that doesn't. Wait a second. I had to go back. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Because the audio, it sounds a bit. It sounds like it's coming through a TV speaker, oh, and okay. then but for that four seconds, it sounds a bit clearer. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. You can hear the edit. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know if they wanted him to say, I don't know if the line was different and they just wanted to edit what he was saying. Yeah. Let's edit something else in that part for whatever reason. Mm. Could be. I don't know. Yeah. Jericho's in the episode. I know. And you didn't this is my least favorite. This is my least favorite episode that Garrick's been in. Really? Yeah. Mm. It just, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't do much for me. I loved a Garrick. I love Garrick in it though. He was, How'd you so like Garrick selling Ducat out for having a thing for Kira? I loved it. <laughs> that was a pretty interesting plot point, right? Like, and actually, now over the last couple episodes, they 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 have started sexualizing Kira in a way to people. These I two, I think, I think Meridian and I don't want. I wouldn't well, say sexualize. Yeah. I would say um, involving her in romantic plot points. Yes. Okay. That's better. Yeah. I don't sexualizing think, implies like they're trying to make her eye candy. Right. right. And that's I think I think in the mirror the in the mirror uh, that universe that that was sexualizing. Yeah. But I, I think what they've done here in the last half dozen or so episodes is yeah. they've tried to incorporate a romantic s- plot in her story. Yeah. Trying to. They they tried it with uh, well, well they tried it with the, what's right his word. name um, Vedic Baral oh he's uh, he's coming back they, they, but that felt forced yeah it did yeah what they're doing now feels a bit more our feelings on Baral are very much echoed by people yeah. on the internet yeah I yeah. know I saw that the other day on yeah. the Facebook page um, it was interesting the conversation that Ducat and her were having in the office where he's like you don't trust us or something or you don't like us and. And what he was really saying is you don't like me to right. her. Like and he was like he was being vulnerable a little bit. Well he was moment. trying to spread out that yeah. saying so you don't like us, but really me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kinda of naive for him to think that she would. Isn't that kind of it speaks to his ego. Well yeah, yeah it, does. it does. He assumed that she likes right. him and then is disappointed she does not. You're right. Yeah. Like yeah. He just he just can't see that she's not going to like him. Right. Ever. Yeah. I mean, what they've what they did to her people. Yeah, come on. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, and then that negotiation, right? Like, let's put people back on the station, and and he, and she's like, no one's going to support this. It's right. under duress, and he acts like it's no big deal. Like to me, his whole thing, that negotiation, like none of it made sense to me. It wasn't no. logical. Um, Why don't they just reconcile with Garrick? They've got him. They've got Cardassian presence on the station. <laughs> right, exactly. Fix it with Garrick. Make him your spy. Like you, you're good. Who says he's not a spy? Ah, he's a clothier. He's a tailor. He's a clothier. So but they can't. I mean, the relationship with Garrick is just so bad that they they don't trust him. Yeah, he did something, or or they did something to him, or whatever right. it was. I mean, I get it, but he he's exiled for a reason. Yeah, there is Cardassian presence on there, though. That's true. So yeah. and and he, you know, he does long to be home. Yeah, he wants to go home. So like there is, takes. you know, it it seems like there is a side of Garrick that would entertain helping Cardassia. Yeah, under the right circumstances. under the right circumstances, right? But I mean, if they want, I mean, what does Ducat want a presence there for? Probably not the right circumstances. I, think, I definitely I not. Out, I think it's yeah. out of pride. Right, like he lost the station. Oh, he wants a foothold. He wants, yeah. He, yeah. He, well, and he lost it. He was the one who lost it and had yeah. to withdraw, and now he wants it back. Before they had the wormhole too. Yeah, exactly. And if they would have had the wormhole, they never would have left. Right. Um, can we talk about the most important thing in this episode? Quark and Odo. Yeah, that's great. Quark and Odo, like you're the most devious. Uh, Ferengi, I know, and then at the very end of the episode, yeah. he like reads his profile. He's like, "Well, Grand Nagus, okay, name another one. Okay, this person. Okay, someone I know. Your brother, Rom? <laughs> my brother Rom. Rom. <laughs> he's just like that was hilarious. Like, and I think actually Odo does believe he's the most devious one, but of course, 
his relationship with Cork is to egg him on. Right. I thought that was a great way to end the episode. Yeah. Where th- you know everything everything works out and and they just leave they just leave his quarters or yeah. they yeah. leave his uh, they his walk office out and continue talking together. Yeah. 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 They were they were both annoyed that they were trapped together and then they leave. And walk together. I like love it's kind of a, it like was a, it was fun. Court goes there because it's the safest place on the station. I yeah. dig it. Yeah, he yeah. knows it. You know, and it's gosh, I'm having some issues with my throat today. Um, sorry. Um, I totally lost what I was going to say because I'm having oh, throat man. issues. Yeah. Ah, some about some about some about some the about, safe the safest place in the court going to the safest place in the yeah, station I don't because know. he's he's got to oh. he's got to protect himself mm-hmm. for profits. No. Yep. Okay. No. 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 I know what it is. I know what it is. Those two are codependent on one another. It's like Batman and the Joker. Neither one of them can truly exist without the other. Interesting. Yin and Yang. Right. Like here's he is the law. He is against the law. They you know? feed off each other. They feed each other. Yeah. Right. They. They they complete. Each Maybe that's other. they why do. They 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 amplify each other. Yeah. Maybe that's why Quark's not in jails because Oda needs that fix. Yeah, it could be. But I was thinking about that watching this episode, like how much their relationship mirrors the idea of like a Batman Joker dynamic. It's, it's good cop bad cop in a different ways. It's good cop bad mm-hmm. bartender. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Sorry, Garrick's on screen. Right? Garrick's eyes on are, screen. My eyes are immediately drawn. We play the episode in the background so we can kind of keep it fresh while we're while we're talking. And uh, whenever Garrick shows up, Joe gets distracted. He does. It's very it's uncomfortable. Just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful character. Yeah, is he it? really is. Yeah, he is a wonderful character. And this year, right? This is probably one of his weaker episodes. But I think this is just not. I think it's because, just because he wasn't super involved from the beginning of the plot. If they would have put him involved in. Yeah, the they, could have, they really could have plugged anybody else in there. Yeah, they could, they could have. Yeah, they could have. He didn't need to be there. Yeah, that could have been Eddington, for all we know. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. Well, no, I think I think him having uh, some, code. some security clearance was a, a, a uh, plot point. Yeah. Fair. I I I do like uh, backtracking to Quark. I like how he had higher security access codes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was pretty interesting. Well, that if you need cool. a level seven, we maybe <laughs> we can work something out. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. We uh. Well, another suspend disbelief thing. So in order to take out life support in the station, all they have to do is shoot a phaser at the station. There's no fail safe there. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's some plot holes. I will say I did enjoy this episode just because it's kind of like a, a simple guilty pleasure. But you, yeah. you do have to it really was, turn off your logic button a little bit. It's not that it was bad. It no. certainly isn't a bad episode. It's a fun little episode. It's a fun little episode. Yeah. But. I've there, come to expect more out of Deep Space Nine. There's no substance really to this There's episode. There's nothing that left me going, again, where's the bigger questions? None of that happened here. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of superficial things to talk about with yeah. this episode, but no, yeah. no real deep meaning. Yeah. I don't know. Do we want to move? I think, I think Odo and Quartz's relationship, you could you could find a bit of a, a deeper conversation there. Right. I mean, you could find a conversation for why... Like kind of what we touched on earlier, why Dakot is so disillusioned with the fact that she should love him and Bader should love him, even though clearly they should not. Well, again, it's an abusive relationship, right? He right. abused her and you know manipulated her, and he's hoping that she has the Stockholm syndrome a little bit, right? Well, it's, and, not to do this, but I'm going to do it on accident. We can you can take it out if you want later. But a lot of politicians in our world think they should be loved. Um, and yeah, they, they do. clearly are not, or thought they were the best at this, and clearly they were not. Matt Gates, we're looking at you, you creep. Oh, I hate him. I, that's a politics thing. Sorry, people. Yeah, let's oh, not man. get into it. No, I yeah. just he is just oh. Ah, ah. I'm gonna say one thing. I've never seen a more punchable face than Matt Gates. <laughs> oh, we should do a Mount Rushmore of punchable faces. It's all Matt Gates. Punchable face. Matt it's Gates. all Matt Gates. Matt Gates. Matt Gates. Matt Gates. No, oh, Jim Jordan. I'd punch Jim Jordan in the face. Well, I Jim Tucker Jordan Carl, because I'm sorry, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Jim Jordan We're going for me too because, far down here, guys. Well, Jim Jordan was the guy who I mean, he was part of this abuse ring yeah. in the wrestling program and has gotten away with it. Mm-hmm. And that's why for me. It's not his politics aside, like that. And then why. and then he comes uh Jesus. He, then he comes he comes off holier than thou. Yeah. It's like you gotta have you don't even have to dig in this guy's closet for this. And he still gets elected. Anyways, that's another right. story. Gosh, we could go down a rabbit <laughs> hole. We need to talk to uh we need to talk to um 
uh, uh, what was it? The the Muck podcast about that, right? That would be fun. The Muck podcast girls. Yeah. Women. Girls is very sexist. About the about the the muckiness of the muckiness. American the American yeah, political yeah. system. They, they cover some really cool stuff on there. So. And it's it's not and it's not. I, th- I think they're it's not partisan. I, well, I think they're. I think they lean a certain way. But, yeah, they lean a certain. Um, way, but they're not. Like, but they, but they, they do cover the. Ga- they run the gamut. They they cover everybody. Yeah, well, and they cover stuff from like the 18th century and like yeah. they're all over the place. So. Yeah. Anyways, they covered Kwame. Did, did they, they? Cover yeah. Kwame? I haven't they seen. covered Kwame Kilpatrick. So did you guys know on Instagram? I I post Detroit stuff semi regularly. Mm-hmm. Some dude yelled at me. I saw this because we put a, a Detroit centric riff about. Um, the Southfield Freeway, mm-hmm. and oh, this is a, like never stop working on yourself, like the Southfield Freeway. No, something? it was uh, speed limit fifty five, oh. and it had that that the uh, wink from the uh, wink. Wandavision, and oh, yeah. the wink meme. Yeah, yeah. He yelled at me because this is a fan page, and you're doing inside jokes. I go, no, it's a podcast page. For a podcast, we talk about Detroit often because we love Detroit. That's it because we're yeah, yeah, yeah because we're because we're from. from Detroit. Yeah. It's a fan page, maybe third, and a podcast well, page first. Well, technically, it's not a fan page. No, it's not. It's a show run page. Yeah. So, well, that happens supposed to be a Star Trek. Now, stuff. if Jason started a page, right, and he did stuff, what I'm saying is, if he started a page, that's a fan page. Yeah. Or yeah. somebody else, uh, another listener, started a page, it's a fan page. And yeah, we can put whatever. We, it's we our. Want. It's ours. It, it took me. It took a lot of my maturity to not respond i wanted to respond so bad you should have i didn't see that one holy crap i'm i'm actually looking yeah, it up now because i'm yeah, yeah. <sighs> anyway yeah, i was like come on because i will continue posting detroit stuff okay so the wandavision wink meme my favorite one was around it was easter centric and it was it said like jesus and it said yolo uh, and then it, the, <laughs> she was giving the wink i didn't see that one <laughs> it was that that's different. fantastic <laughs> I like oh. the uh, the one where it's uh, the guy in the grave. It says, <laughs> and it says Jesus, Jesus, and then Jesus. Jesus is winking. Yeah. That's a trip. I think I have that on my phone, <laughs> I actually. I think you sent it to me. Okay, yeah. That's a trip. Uh, I'll put it on the, on the Instagram. Oh so the, the, the Easter memes were really, really good this year. Heck, yeah. 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 People give them time in their, in their uh, isolation. Come up with some clever stuff. So have you found, did you find it? I haven't found it. Oh, yet. I can't remember. We what. could do it afterwards. Yeah, yeah but the I'll, guy, the guy was a jerk. I was like, "What? Yeah, who cares?" I mean, he unfollowed us. Spoiler alert. Okay, great. So, so what this guy's saying is that he he follows the speed limit on every road he drives on wherever he lives. Well, plus I put a lot of irrelevant stuff on Instagram, like a lot, like the one I put yeah. out today about Decepticons. Who cares? It's for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just to just to have fun, just to get interaction. Yeah, just to goof off. Yeah. I see it. I and see some, it. some people take things way too seriously. Some people with Taste, Kardashians. Tasteless. Tasteless. Oh, you found it. Yeah. Tasteless. tasteless. Are we shaking, tasteless? Because we could. Oh, we are head. tasteless. I mean, oh. he's on. He's on the money. He's yeah. He's being a jerk about it, but he's on the money. Wow. Because my kids listen to this, I really try to be tasteful a little bit. But yeah, well, I, I feel like we're tasteless. Uh, we're PG thirteen tasteless. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. The occasional flirtation with the yar. Yeah. If we start talking about Momoa, then it gets a little R. Or pizza. Get, or, pizza. A, yeah. or pizza. It's a hard R cut of a couple of these podcasts. <laughs> or Yahoo uh, Yahoo Mail. Right. So Meridian. FM. Meridian. Do I really have to uh, summarize this? Because this, first of all. Yes, you do. First of all, yeah. it was a terrible episode. It was a terrible episode. Second of all, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not the summary guy. Yeah, I'm you are the now. the new guy. Now okay, you are so today. It's going to be short and it's going to be awful. I like it. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I've said that a few times to to my. Never mind. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Fact, so fact check, fact check, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I can't. I came in at the end of the conversation. I I didn't hear all of that, and then my brain filled in the rest. And <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like I, I I censored myself, but people know what I meant. Oh yeah. man. Oh my god. Okay, so Meridian. So they're on the Defiant, right? And <laughs> true. <laughs> so far, my, so good. Okay. So my sum, my summaries are more of a give and take, not a not a monologue like your guys. <laughs> oh my god! So they they are approaching this 
star cluster or something, and there's a, pl- a planet that appears out of nowhere. And so it's called Meridian, and they go and they talk to the people there, and they don't really exist. They kind of go be- between um, dimensions. dimensions. And so they exist as, like, consciousness. Mm-hmm. And Dex inevitably falls in love with one of the guys. And they, they're they only there, like, a week or something, a few days or, or whatever it is. Yeah. And they then they leave for 60 12 years. 12 days. 12 days, and then they're gone for 60 years into the other dimension, and they'll be back. And they don't, they don't age while they're gone. They only age as they're, as they're there. So when they age 12, yeah. 12 days at a time in each, uh, in each exist- rotation. Cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she falls in love with him, uh, that comes to the end of the 12 days. And she very convincingly to me decides that she wants to be with this guy. Okay. No? This is a time to sum up the episode, not offer us your thoughts. Continue. No. <laughs> you know what? This, this is in my final summary ever. <laughs> First and last. <laughs> Oh, I'm, right. at, at least I'm I'm not at least I'm not chewing or calling people dad daddy <laughs> or singing. Well, I, don't, I mean, uh, of the three, I'd rather him sing. <laughs> if you start chewing, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my! So, so she has, so she decides that she wants to go with him, but he like evaporates into the next dimension before, yeah. and she can't be with him. Okay, and there's a B plot with. Odo trying to get a hollow suite of Kira. Odo? Or um I'm sorry, Quark I trying to doubt it though. Yeah, true. Yeah. Trying to get a hollow trying to create a brand new hollow suite of Kira mm-hmm. for a paying customer who's obsessed with and he's is he from the next generation, right? No? No. This is the first appearance of Jeffrey Combs. Really? Yep. yep. Okay. Um so anyway, that's the B plot and co- comedy ensues on that plot. That was awful. I think it's pretty amazing. No, think, it's it's perfect for the episode is what oh, it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, I see what you did there because yeah. it was crap. That's yeah. True. Um, I literally put two notes for this entire episode. I actually took a sh- crap ton. Here's I took a, almost no notes. I'm for just going to tell you my note. We don't yeah. have to go into it. More teasing of relationship between Fu and Kira, which probably should be Odo, but it was a spell check. Dax, Were you listening to Foo Fighters at the I time? I probably was. Dax leaving the station for this guy seems out of character. It seems asinine is what it is. Yeah, it, yeah. it was stupid. Those are the only two notes I have. Those are great notes. First of all, let's get to it first. Jeffrey Coombs' first appearance uh, in the B-plot. He was still really good in the B-plot. He was, he was, fant- he was the best part of this episode. He becomes yes. a primary player in Star Trek after this. He takes on a major character in Deep Space Nine. Two. Yes, he does. And then he becomes, he's played a lot of characters, hasn't he? Yes. And I did he, some research on uh, Jeffrey Combs. He's done a lot of uh, character work for Star Trek. Yes. Oh yeah, he's a yeah, and he does Shran in Star Trek Enterprise, and he's incredible as Shran. He does. He's Jeffrey Combs is lights out. Yes, he the, is. Is it Combs or Combs? Jeffrey Jeffrey Combs, I think. I is go it, with Combs, but is it C O M B S? Yes, C O. So it could be Combs. Okay, that's I, how I pronounce. Uh, who mm-hmm. knows? We could I, he was. Right. I thought he was fantastic in this episode. Yes, he was. He uh, he was very very good. Yeah, he was really very good. creepy. He he just he was he so, nailed it. He yep. did nail it. And the the thing that sucks about that is the rest. Everything around him was garbage. That's the B plot. I actually kind of enjoyed. I but did. The a plot was so terrible that it made me not like this episode. Yeah. Unlike like with Second Sight, I didn't like the whole episode. At least the B plot made me not want to throw this episode through a window. Yeah. You know, that, that, that you're right. That was the redeeming part of this episode. Cause it was good character development with Kira and Odo and their, the evolution of the relationship and working together. To, I mm-hmm. love the beginning where she's holding his hand and calling him sweetheart or yeah. whatever. And then as she, when this she is my leave, lover. See you later, sweetheart. And then he like looks at his, his hand, hand and like, just... it's like, Ooh, yeah. And then he just he's, gives this gaze at, uh, at, uh, he's feeling the tingle. Tyrion, Tyr- Tyrion, Tyrion? Tyrion. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I love that. They're building up this relationship with these two. And Subtly. more importantly, they're showing um, not just the the um, the uh, soon-to-be romantic relationship, possibly romantic relationship. Um, I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, There's a guy here that hasn't seen the show, man. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Damn. I know. 
they're, like I didn't see it coming. They're also building up that these characters are spending so much time together. These people are spending time together. They're becoming close, right? Right. Kira was not close with anyone. And now here she is like holding right. his hand, calling him honey and like having him in on this joke with her, having her, having him help her create a body image of herself and throw Quark's head on it. Like, yeah. right. It's still her body technically, but it really isn't. It's a body. It's double a body double. Yeah. Because she didn't want to be in that costume because she was claustrophobic from the, the the last episode where she was a Cardassian. Okay, that's a big story from her Cardassian daddy. Jesus, Christ. eight lifetimes experience in Jadzia Dax, and mm-hmm. after twelve days, she wants to run off with this guy. He's not even cute. Wasn't he from Lost? Was he? I think he was from Lost. He was Lost on Meridian. This is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. It was really bad. It's a bad it's a bad and story plot. It's also bad that that Starfleet would just be like, "Okay, go." That's not how it works, man. You can't just leave. I mean, you could. You no. could. Why? I mean, you could, but you ain't coming back. It was a leave of absence. I don't I don't think I don't think she wanted to come back. Yeah, it was a leave of absence, right? Yeah. But like and then that Cisco is like, "Well, as long as this if this is what you really want, I support you." There's no way Come on. He would be like, are you serious? Yeah. Eight lifetimes experience, and you're going right down to this little tiny crush. And I know in the past I've argued that Jadzi is different and everything like that, but this is eight lifetimes of experience, and after eight days you're going to want to run off with this guy? It's dumb. It doesn't even matter that you're... He had no no substance. The character was... the, the, The guy's character was... So bad, but it's it's not even that for me. It's that because if Joe were in that situation or you were in that situation, we're still not doing it, and we've had one lifetime of experience, right? Like, there's just no logical way a Starfleet officer, someone who's been trained, someone who's taken classes on emotional health and intelligence mm-hmm. be, to become a Trill symbiote, would make this move. It's not logical. It's after not, a week. After, Come on. Yeah, because they don't they don't start liking each other right away. I mean, it takes a couple of days. No, they did. And she has to fall out of a tree. Well, he asked well, if her, he asked how far down her markings tr- went. Yeah. All the way. The baby. flirtation. The flirtation was there. I all the way was to there. My toes. But come on. Um, I was curious about climbing. the markings, though. <laughs> I think I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. You pervert. But climbing a tree that's this uber romantic thing yeah it's like my come gr- on. it's like my girl you for know? grown people come on i wish he would have got stung by a bee and died <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of them he can't he has to wear his glasses where are his glasses my, so, so they're on the defiant and, and he's talking to her and she does the whole collar pull thing i saw that, that was yeah. terribly directed that was a Terrible idea to even do that. Yeah. Oh, something, something. We could go on the planet and, and whatever. And she pulls out her collar. Yeah, I guess we could. That come on. She, it was it was executed poorly too. It wasn't it even was very terrible. Flirt- it it didn't look flirtatious. It looked more like the costume was itching her neck. Yeah, exactly. No I problem. mean, there's a there's a way to do that and be for flirtatious. That was not no it, every, nothing about nothing about that plot point was uh, redeeming. I, I was so upset with the execution, the writing of it. None of it made sense, and I just I, it wasn't believable. There was no like, yeah, this is gonna happen. That's a good way to put it. There was it was not believable. Yeah, uh, you give up career after after essentially. It's not. It's not twelve days. It's not believable. No. It's not believable. That's a great way to summarize it. It's just not believable. And you don't know this guy, man. Like, th- again, this could be a cult. She could be joining a cult. She doesn't even realize it. They could be hiding a lot of. You know, like there's, yeah, there's yeah. just, and also, aren't there Starfleet regulations about falling in love with the people you're you're meeting as you go out in space? Like, I don't, well, I mean, Wrecker, I know, yes, it happens a lot, but like, Jordy, I mean, they have all Kirk, 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 you know, but Kirk, it's just Kirk, Kirk. <laughs> This, is supposed, this this one's supposed to be different. I don't know. I feel like they do a disservice to Jadzia's character by doing this. I her. agree. Yes, this I, is a step back. This is a big step backwards for her character. It was a it was not well thought out. And in fact, I got a quote from Ron Moore, who was uh, one of the executive producers. I don't think anyone liked this episode. I don't think we did. Everything went wrong. Mm-hmm. And then the guy who uh, they get the like the effects supervisor, one of those said, "I don't want to talk about it." <laughs> 
It was pretty funny. But the back to the B plot. That was funny. I like how they work together. I like how they. I think they, I think Jeffrey Combs is the only one who seemed like he was enjoying making this episode. Well, the B plot people probably had a good reason to have fun with it because they knew the outcome. That that's, but to put Quark's head on her body is hilarious. It's yeah, a great idea. It's really funny. Right. Yeah. I, you know, it had me for a second too. Yeah. I was like, all right. Okay. I think we all saw nope. It. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. That's a hard no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a great. That was a. Great, that was a hard no. <laughs> really. It's like the whole like half fish, half human thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Have you ever, how I met your mother? There's an episode where they're like, "Would you date a you know? Would you would you be with someone who's half fish and half human?" They're like, "Okay, what part?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? It's, it's a, a valid follow up question, though. It's a valid follow up question. It's not a bad question to ask. Not a bad question to ask. But sure. yeah. So uh, anything else? I could rant on this for a while, but I let's I, not I, do I, it. I will not. Let's not do it. I don't want to. I don't want to spend my time. Talking about garbage. Ooh, garbage. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. I said it. Well, then that leads us to ranking, right? Let's do it. And that was such a bad episode. Uh, yeah. That was such a bad episode, people. Not, and it's not, it wasn't even bad in the context of what we, it was bad in a vacuum. It's bad in a vacuum. It, it, uh, the planet thing could have been interesting, but the love story took away from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, love story. I feel even stupid saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. What's the first episode called? Civil Defense. Civil Defense. Uh, what? All right. I'm going to give Civil Defense a six. Wow. I was going to say a six as well wow, because wow, I, wow, I did wow. it. I, it was kind of a guilty pleasure to watch. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was okay. I mean, Garrick's in it, so it's great. <laughs> and I, I do, all the Garrick stuff aside, I, I really do generally enjoy um episodes where Cardassians are involved. I think it it, it holds my attention a bit more that the plots are a bit more in, uh, involved and, and they tend to cast Cardassians so well. Yeah. They do do a good job. So I'll, I'll give it a solid 6. 5. Yeah. It's average. That's that's fair. I don't fault you for that at all. No, that's that's a fair it's, ranking. It's average. I just can't. I can't. Yeah. All right. Meridian. 3. I'm going to give it a three as well because I did not hate it as much as I did Second Sight, mostly because of that B storyline. If it didn't have that B storyline, I might have rated it a one. See, and yeah. that's kind of where I'm fighting right now because I want to give it a 2.5. I say do it. But the B story is so good. The B story was enjoyable. 2.5. Yeah. I'm giving it a 2.5. I'm doing it. The, the A plot is a zero. Oh any Any ranking I give it is almost solely based on how entertaining the b-plot was yeah i agree and, and, and the b-plot and, and jeffrey combs i mean other than that it was it was there was no redeeming quality no redeeming hot quality. garbage woo, woo, woo. Hot and garbage. even oh God, it was just so bad it was what I, were you I gonna thought, say what were you gonna say i was gonna say i i even think it's it was worse than second sight it it I actually do honestly it like, was like, worse than second sight because but it had the b-plot i didn't hate second sight okay though. That's i thing. hated it I hate it. So if I'm if I'm just going the love interest plots for Second Sight and this and Meridian, Second but Sight. But you know me, Ben. You don't know her. But here's the thing. I can I guess I can understand Cisco having a desire to move on from yeah. these feelings, yes. the the feeling of loss. Fair. And so that part, at least in there's something in that plot that makes sense right. there's nothing about what jazia is doing that makes any sense for anything her character has done to this point two i'm changing it can you change it to a two i can't <laughs> thank you i appreciate it you See, and i are now tied for the lowest ranking of any episode okay that's the, not a good episode but the b plot you're really gonna rank it a two yes that? i am because so like, you, like he's saying jazia is so out of character so incredibly out of character that it in fact damages the character. Did you just mention they didn't they didn't mention the trail at all? No, they didn't, which is very odd. Yeah. You think the trail would have something to say about a symbiote? Well, you think the combined out, experience would win out in that. Yeah. And I, I feel like Jadzia was a very consistent character. Or fair one of the more consistent Agreed. one of the more consistent characters on the cast. Which makes it even more egregious that they did this to her. Yeah, it was dumb. I mean, Cisco is, has floundered in his yeah. in his but character development. Even with that, it's in his character, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Man, so bad. Yeah. Well. I think that might be the worst, my least favorite episode so far of Ooh. this of the series. Of the series. I, I More than you're moving along home because you hate that. Ella Moraine. Okay. One, two, three. Ella Moraine. Yes. Come, come with me. Come with me. Ella More than move along home. See, I thought because there was I've, some charm about move along home in its now I've, ineptitude. I've, 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 I've wrapped with people on Twitter who have kind of, who have this affinity, this like affinity for it. It's almost like a guilty pleasure or a quirky little side episode of Deep Space Nine that I guess over time you you enjoy it more because it's just kind of silly. I right, liked what it tried right. to do at the end. I like to say that's no, just a game. I mean, yeah. I, I, I kind of like it. It was silly. It, it well, I didn't think it was a good episode. It was really dumb. And it, it was kind of silly. But this was just really bad all over. It tried to be a drama, and it was yeah. dumb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, now we're leaving this episode depressed. I know, but uh, I think one of the episodes next week is at least pretty decent. We got some good yeah. ones coming up. But, you know, that's okay. But, I mean, it was okay. We got a Garrick episode, and we got a fun B-plot. We got a, Yeah, we did. We did. We ooh. had... Ooh. Ooh. Two weeks from now, we got, we got uh, some ones. I'm really interested to see what you guys talk about in two weeks. Okay. That's two weeks from now, though, man. I know. I just I just looked at my chart. How dare you tease me like that? I like to tease you. Mm. This is very this is odd. I'm staring at him right now. Yeah. I feel like Homer Neither just backing up into the bush away from you guys. <laughs> All right. Or well, towards us. Well. No. I'm backing yeah. out of your bush, not. Yeah. Into- <laughs> yeah, well. That was a misspeak. That was a misspeak. So if you want more of this, you can find us on Instagram or Twitter. Or Facebook. Or MySpace. Or YouTube now. Yeah. Yeah. Go check out. It's it's just our audio. Now, who... Okay. No, yeah, it's just audio. So who, who does that? Me. So you put all the images in there? Yep. So you listen to the episode, add the images. Yep. Look at this guy. It's uh-huh. pretty rad. That's cool. Check it it's out. It's fun. All right. Everyone, thanks for joining us. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> it's the Dad in the Rock podcast. This is Sean. And this is Chris. Join us every week as we give you the dad's point of view on pop culture. And stumbling our way through fatherhood. <laughs> Dad jokes. Star Wars. Streaming. Tech news. Movie news. Listen to lifelong pals tell stories from past and present. Cruise with us into the cheesy every week on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and other podcast platforms. And as always, find past episodes and links to our social media pages on dadnarock.com. 